Hi, I'm Craig Regsegger from Wood Magazine. And would you believe you can make cove moldings like this, these type of curved cuts on your table saw? Not just cutting the cove molding off, but making the actual profile of the cove on your table saw. It's a neat trick you can uh, learn real quickly. And first off, why would you want to do this? Well, the simple reason is you can make molding that matches your project perfectly. You buy the lumber for the molding at the same time, you make your own molding, and it blends very nicely with the finished project. The other thing is it gives you a lot of options. You can go from a narrow molding, such as this, even narrower, all the way up to a more medium, even a wider molding. This one's almost three and a half inches wide across here. It gives you a lot of options to customize a project, make it exactly the way you want to make it. So how do you make these kind of curved cuts on the table saw, which you typically think of as making just straight cuts? Well, I'll show you. First thing to do is a, a little bit of setup on your table saw. You won't need the rip fence for this. You won't need your miter gauge. And if your saw has a riving knife, you'll need to remove that as well. Uh, for a blade, I recommend the higher tooth count, the better. The higher your tooth count, the smoother the cove is going to be and the uh, less sanding you'll have to do um, at, the, at the end of the process. I've got in here an 80 tooth crosscut blade. And this will give me a pretty smooth finish on the cove molding. Still going to be some sanding required, but not nearly as much as if I was using a 40 tooth combination blade or something similar. Now the other thing you need to cut cove molding is a, a little jig. And what this jig is is simply a little pivoting parallelogram. When you make this, it's really simple. Opposite sides of the same length. And drill these holes carefully so they're centered on the width. And assemble this carefully so that as you pivot the jig, the sides always stay parallel. It's, again, pretty simple to make. The reason for this jig is you're going to take the dimensions of your cove. Now, the example we used for the uh, magazine article, we had a cove that was 3 and 3 eighths of an inch wide. That means this measure across here from this point to this point was 3 and 3 eighths inch. So I'm going to take my jig and set the arms 3 and 3 eighths inch apart and then twist the lock nut, the wing nuts here to lock it at that width. Next, I want to lower the blade and then raise it to the height of my final cut. That would be the depth of the cove from this point to the bottom of the cove. In the profile I want, that's a half inch. So we need to set the blade one half inch above the table. You want to measure carefully. Make sure you're measuring the highest point on the blade. Okay. Next, a piece of masking tape here. Put a piece right in the front of the where the blade just falls below the tabletop. So it just kisses that painter's tape. Right there. And do I need to mention we're doing all this with the saw unplugged? Now the same at the back. Wherever that tooth comes above the table, that's where the edge of the tape should be. Next, I'm going to make a couple marks. One, where that front tooth comes down and where the back tooth comes up. Now that I've got these marks uh, made on the, the blade, I'm going to lower the blade completely below the table. These marks are going to help me position my jig. Simply pivot the jig until the inside edges of the jig align with those marks. At that point, I'm going to make a mark right along the inside edge of this fence here. Okay, with that mark made, I can take the jig off. I'm done with that. You're going to need two straight pieces of scrap, have a straight edge and pretty much square to the face. It's not critical that they be perfectly square, but these are the two fences that are going to guide the piece across the, the uh, table saw as we make the cut. Just take a piece of scrap, about three quarters inch thick. This measurement, again, is not real critical. Half inch is fine, but three quarters it seems like you have plenty of that laying around. Just using that as a spacer along the mark, and I'm going to align the fence three quarters of an inch from that mark, and I'll clamp it down. One thing to be clear about, and to make sure you do, this happened to me the first few times I did this on the, 
on the table saw, make sure your clamps are outside this face. You need a clear path for your workpiece to pass through. So there's my first fence in place. To position the second one, I'm going to use the actual workpiece in which I'm going to cut the cove molding. Just place it against that first fence. This is the jointed edge here. And, and position the second fence. And I can see I've got a little too snug down at that end. It won't pass through. I need to adjust my fences. There, I've got a good sliding fit. I'm going to peel this masking tape up off there. I don't need it anymore. And I'm just about ready to start making cuts. Again, as you know, this piece is going to slide through here. I want to make sure, uh, since the blade is going to be hidden during this cut, I'm not pushing with my thumb back here. I've got a push block that's got a nice heel on it that I can hook over the back edge here and push the piece through. Now you're making a cut here that the blade really isn't designed to make. You're pushing kind of sideways into it, so you want to make very light cuts, very shallow cuts. No more than about a sixteenth of an inch on a pass. So there's my first pass. Teeth are just barely above the table. This process makes a lot of dust, even if you use a dust collector. A dust mask or a respirator is a good idea. That's not smoke coming out the end. That's just fine dust. I've raised the blade another sixteenth of an inch for the next pass. Raise the blade slightly between each pass. To cut this cove, I took twelve passes. Okay, so there it is. My nice wide cove molding, three and three-eighths wide, half inch in depth. Now there is still, you're able to feel this, you'd be able to feel it still needs some sanding before it's ready to go. Sanding a, a curved surface like that can be a little tricky, but you can make a custom sanding block using just some of this pink foam that you can find at the home center. The easy thing to do is just put it next to your cove molding you just created and trace that. Then just use a coping saw or you can take it to the band saw and just kind of rough cut close to that line as best you can. If you take some self-adhesive sandpaper, lay it into the cove molding you just cut, now take the rough sanding block and just run it back and forth shape that block. Now that profile matches the cove perfectly. Peel that off there. Put some fresh sandpaper on the bottom of my block and I can start sanding. Okay, I've got the rip fence back on the saw. I've swapped out my blade for a combination blade here. And I've also installed a new zero clearance insert that allows me to tilt the blade to 45 degrees. On the end of my cove blank, I've laid out the final profile. I've got to make four bevel cuts now, bevel rips, to bring the cove molding to final shape. And that's simply a matter of taking your marks, aligning them with the tooth on the blade, and then bringing the rip fence up to that. So there's the final profile, and then when you're 
ready to put it on top of your cabinet, it'll sit about like that. Now, I've just made one single piece of molding here. One tip I can give you is when you're making molding for a cabinet, don't measure and make just enough. Make at least one piece more than you think you're going to need because it's, it, it's much better to have one extra piece than to end up a little bit short and try to duplicate a setup because you'll never get it exactly the same. So make yourself a little bit extra as you're making this cove molding. Now that you know how to make basic cove molding, let's get trickier. To make a cove like this that leans to one side, just tilt the blade. Here I've tilted the blade to 45 degrees and I'm feeding at about a 10 degree angle. And you've probably noticed the fences are positioned differently. Here's why. When the blade is straight up and down, you can feed from either direction, it doesn't matter. But when you tilt the blade, you need to feed into the rotation of the blade. That simply means if your blade tilts to the left, like this one, feed from left to right. If your blade tilts to the right, feed from right to left. Here on the final pass, you can really see the shape of the cove. As you see, you can play around with the feet angle, with the blade angle, uh, and all kinds of things to come up with a variety of coves. Have fun, experiment with it, and uh, once you get a piece like this cut, it's a good idea to write on it the settings you had on the blade, whether the feet angle, the blade height, and the blade tilt. That way you can build a library of cove moldings and have one that's right for your next project.